Hey guys, welcome back. This is my uh, introduction and installation of my uh, Asus uh, P86, uh, P8P67 Deluxe, which is the uh, it's the newly revised edition. I'm also going to be installing my i7 processor uh, 2600. Uh, I didn't buy the K because I didn't think I'd have a need to overclock, so hopefully that turned out to be all right. So here's a quick quick look at the box here. Uh, just uh, give you all sides and serial number, and pretty standard. Standard ASUS-y stuff. ASUS-y, that's funny. And on the back, I won't go into too much detail because you guys can go look at the box in the store. If you want, I ordered it online. Uh, the box also has this nice, which I really like when getting a motherboard, is uh, has this really, really nice window that you can, uh, they can have a look at and uh, look at the mother motherboard. Because to me, with the machine that I'm building, aesthetics really, uh, really do matter. So here's the box opened up. Uh, here's the mother, quick look at the motherboard. Four RAM slots, uh, uh, 1155, and it supports a whole bunch of different ones. But I'm putting the 1155 uh, LGA i7 socket. I really like the uh, the fin design Asus has gone with here. Let me go ahead and get this out of the box. So I've gone ahead and taken this out of the box here. I've gone ahead and take this. I've gone ahead and taken this out of the box here. I, I'm not grounded yet, so I have not going to take my uh, not going to take this out of the out of the wrapper just yet. Uh, so I'm going to get a quick look at the uh, look at the ports here. So it has a um, Dolby um, DTS surround sensation, 5.1 system. Uh, two, four, six, eight. I see eight USB ports. Uh, B2 Go, which is Bluetooth Go, coax audio out, um, fiber optic, or yeah, no optical sound. Uh, a combo keyboard, uh, keyboard mouse PS PS2 port, uh, right in there. Um, two eSATA ports on the bottom here, right there. And a clear CMOS button, and two uh, e e Ethernet jacks here for a dual gigabit interface. So we'll go ahead and pick this up here. So get another look at those beautiful fins. I really like uh, like the way Asus has uh, has done this. They put their their um, put their sweet time to this. There's eight SATA ports. Uh, your standard uh, 24 pin connector and uh, eight inch uh, eight pin additional power. Your um, front I/O connections, uh, nice uh, power and reset button right on the motherboard. Uh, there's an EPU switch, which is for some energy savingness. Uh, here's the here's the port for um, the three uh, USB 3.0 box, which is included, and you have three PCI slots. Uh, I think two of them will run uh, together at uh, at uh, X. Eight, and then the top one is X16, and the middle one is also X16. The bottom one, the bottom one is uh, runs individually on itself. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and that's I mean that's that's that. So go ahead and what else is in the box here? So we have our, our plate for the back, our I/O plate. Quick quick look at that. Uh, this is the USB. No, I guess the, this is the oh here it is. Here's the box. And then I guess those, I don't know what those are, but uh, we will find out. Once again, this is my first build from scratch, and I've, have, I've only just taken uh, parts before and, um, and rebuilt machines. Anyways, here's the, here's the floppy drive bay box for this, for this USB 3.0. Unfortunately, on my case, I don't have floppy, so, but my case comes with USB 3.0 uh, up in the top there, so I'm just going to connect that to the motherboard. I probably won't even use this box because I don't have any USB 3.0 devices. I don't know about you guys. We have our uh, SLI bridge, uh, our Q Connect cable, which allows you to basically plug in all of your input uh, connectors from the front of the device, and uh, then you just take this whole brick and you plug it in uh, right there, and that makes it makes plugging everything in really easy. Two more cables here. I guess these are USB 3.0. I'm not sure, but I will find out. Uh, oh no, these are SATA cables. SATA cables. So these are six gigabyte SATA cables in white. And this is a 3 gigabit set of, set of cable, I believe. Okay. And other than that, we have our manual, BT Go, manual, uh, user guide, and yeah. Oh, and I feel a uh, yeah. There's a CD. There's a CD in here with the uh, Asus uh, sticker. The CD you probably won't even use because newer drivers will be online any anyways. So there's my quick look at my at the motherboard, and um, here's the here's the the processor. I mean. And there's just there'll just be a heat sink in this box. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get this open and install this onto the motherboard, and then we'll get this mounted inside of my case. 
Hey guys, just want to give you a, a, a quick uh, open box look of this puppy before I go ahead and install it. Just a quick overview. I won't say much about it, just uh, add this into the video. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, take off the, the cover here, which I've already loosened. Check all the pins and then install the processor and the heat sink, which, which already has, uh, it's just a stock heat sink. And it already has the paste on it, so I can just go ahead and pop that puppy on. So once I do that, I'll come back with you guys as I mount it into the machine. So I've gone ahead. I've gone ahead and uh, installed the heatsink and the CPU there. The only thing you're gonna want to make sure of is uh, whatever side you decide to orient uh, your uh, heatsink to. Make sure that the uh, the cable for the fan will reach that. Because if I turned it the other way, for example, without uncoiling all the cable off of here, this wouldn't have been able to reach. So that's just uh, one thing to look out for. And then once you get that on there with this with these stock heatsinks, you just push down on each of these until uh, they lock into place. So there you go. I'm gonna get this mounted into the case. I just I flipped to the next page of the manual and I realized I have to install the RAM next. So the RAM that I'm installing is uh, uh, four uh, four gig uh, chips of course our vengeance memory with uh, these nice nice heat sinks. So here's a quick look at the packaging. I picked this up from Tiger Direct for around ninety bucks for both of them total. So go ahead and crack this open and uh, install them in the motherboard. So uh, for all of you who are curious on how to install install RAM. Uh, there's a little notch down there in the bottom, and there's only one way to install the RAM on here. The only thing you have to make sure is that you've unlocked the channels over here. And once you've done that, it's just uh, as simple as lining it up and then pushing down until it locks in. Uh, but I can't, I can't do that because the board is on the box here. So I'm going to shut the camera off. I don't have some, someone to help me today. And uh, go ahead and mount these, install all four sticks. And there we have it, all four sticks of uh, DDR3 RAM locked and loaded so once again I just put those in and then I push down there until those locks uh, snap back into place so now we're ready to go ahead and put the motherboard into the case so uh, the motherboard uh, tray actually slides out of my machine so I've taken it out here and uh, the one thing I've noticed is they've only put in a couple of these uh, of, the, of the motherboard supports um, or the stand-ins I think they're called and so I got I to put in the other three that came included with my pack of screws that came with the case so that they line up with holes such as those ones on the board. And so I'm going to go ahead and screw the, uh, screw the standoffs into the, into the frame and then put the motherboard on here. And then using the motherboard screws, I will screw them down. Uh, screw the motherboard down, actually, to the, to the case. And I'll be able to slide this back into the case, which is just chilling down there. So here's the motherboard back inside the case. Nothing hooked up yet, and the back is not on. But that's one thing that I really love about this case is when I need to hook up uh, SATA connectors and things, I can just slide the motherboard halfway out of this case, access everything, do all the cable routing, and then slide it back in. And so it's, it's, it's a really, really nice, really clean design. So I'm going to go ahead and get my SATA drives hooked up and my power to the, to the board and everything, and uh, do all that, and then I'll, I'll be right back with you. Hey guys, I'm back. So here is my motherboard, graphics card, and everything all fully installed. And we're just about ready to fire, fire it up for the first time. So when I do this, I'll turn off the light, but the thing that we're looking for are four LEDs, which are the, the DRAM for testing the RAM, the CPU LED, the VGA LED, and the boot device LED. And what these are going to tell us is that all three of the devices have registered and then gone off. We're also going to be looking for any codes that the motherboard may display right, uh, right, right down there on that display, and that will uh, that will tell us if there's any problems going on. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn this the light off on my phone. Okay, so all right, so I'm going to go down here to the power button and just go ahead and hit that. So there you go. That you can see the the lights working. The other one's hidden down there, and uh, there's the VGA. Did the CPU and the RAM already? And we have a code. It says 62 EO 62. What does that mean? Hmm. A2. Anyway, those will mean something in the manual that I'll go check. Uh, this is why you want to have your manual. Sorry, I'll turn that back on. This is why you want to have your manual handy whenever you're when, when you're operating this, because it'll give you error codes, and then you just flip through the manual 
And there's a nice table there that will tell you exactly what's going on. I'm just going to my fan controller and turn that off. There's a nice table that will tell you exactly what's going on. So I'll swing up there, swing up to my computer now. And here we have a look at the new bias that Asus has designed. And as you can probably definitely, oh, it's gone now. There you go. You can see I have a mouse. So if I can just grab my mouse here. I can just move my mouse around to make sure I'm using my non-dominant hand and uh, click. There's a one-click easy setting for overclocking. And to uh, change the boot order, you just drag the devices around, and then there's a quick menu that you can just click to access whatever boot device you would like. Also, I only have one fan hooked up at the moment, which is the CPU fan that you just saw. Hooked up to the motherboard, the rest go to my fan controller, but when they're all here, you can go ahead and see the speeds of all, all of the fans. One other thing that you guys should note that I had to change was, I'm going to grab my mouse here. I, the RAM that I installed, so you go up to here and you go to advanced mode. One other thing that I noticed when I installed this is my, uh, my memory runs at 1600 megahertz. That's the speed, but when you first come in here, it'll, it's going to run at uh, 1333 and that's the default. So to change that, you go up to um, what is it? AI Tweaker. Advanced. Huh. Let me see. I did this the other day and I don't remember how I did it. <sighs> oh, yeah, here we go. So it's under AI Tweaker. Get onto Memory Frequency over to DDR3. And so it'll be set to this and you just turn it up to whatever uh, whatever is the RAM, spe uh, whatever is specified on the box of your RAM. So I just turn it up to normal, and if, if you have RAM that's overclockable or higher frequency RAM, you go ahead and set that there, and that way you'll get full uh, full use of your RAM, and you'll be able to utilize it fully. So I didn't make any changes, so I'm going to go ahead and just discard changes and exit. And there you go. Thanks for watching.